please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back. You're watching Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. Well, market regulator SEBI has made a U-turn on the April circular, which barred NRIs from being beneficial owners of FBI funds. Now, after calling the concerns regarding the KYC norms preposterous initially, the market regulator has now said that a revised circular will be issued soon. Now, what led to this change in stance by the regulator? Hear out what SEBI chief Ajitayagi had to say. There was one confusion which actually broadly I must uh, say and admit that it was that for beneficial ownership under PMLA, there is a definition of beneficial ownership. That was clarified by Department of Revenue we, when it, it came to a notice. We, our suo motto, we gave, gave it to Khan Committee. No one has asked us to give it to the Khan Committee. We took up with Department of Revenue as to what is their view. And then they clarified that PMLA definition is uh, for uh, KYC purpose, for reporting purpose. And as far as the eligibility is concerned, concerned regulator could take a view. So that's how it uh, started. There was no intention of not having consultation. Well, Sabi Chairman Ajay Tyagi also said that ICICI Bank and Chanda Kochar have expressed intention to settle the case over alleged irregularities in loans given to the Videocon Group. ICICI Bank responded saying it has replied to Sebi's show cost notice, but it has not filed any application for settlement. Yash Chen is here with more details on that. Yash, what did Sebi Chairman say about this particular case? Well, it all started in the question and answer session, which happened post uh, the SEBI press conference, where journalists asked uh, SEBI chairman Ajay Tyagi on whether or not Chanda Kocher as well as ICICI Bank have filed any sort of settlement or a consent application in the ICICI Bank Videocon loan case. At that point of time, SEBI chairman Ajay Tyagi referred this particular question to the whole time member at SEBI, that is Ananta Barua, and he, at that point of time, clarified that uh, a, a settlement or a consent application has been filed by both the parties, that is ICICI Bank as well as uh, uh, Chanda Kochar, but later on, after that session, when journalists reached out to him to seek more clarity in terms of the road ahead for the settlement application, he clarified that no formal uh, settlement or a consent application has been filed with SEBI so far. But yes, uh, an intention from ICICI Bank as well as Chanda Kochar has been expressed when it comes to filing this settlement application. Nevertheless, one needs to understand that uh, a settlement ap application essentially means that uh, any individual or a company or an institution wants to settle uh, any particular default without accepting or denying any sort of wrongdoing. And yes, uh, from that perspective, just the intention of filing a settlement application from both ICICI Bank and Chanda Kocher does narrate a very, very crucial story. Thank you, Yash, for that. But another important decision from the SEBI board meet. Now, in line with the stated intent of the government and RBI, the market regulator took a step to deepen and expand bond markets. Now, according to SEBI's directive, companies that have over double A rating and want to borrow more than 100 crore rupees should raise 25% of the requirement via bonds. Now, the order takes effect from 1st of April. Let's go across to Lata now who, to understand the impact of this decision. Lata, tell us what is your take on this particular order? Well, for the past uh, you know, two or three years, government, RBI, SEBI have all been wanting this step that large corporates should borrow from the bond market. One, because it eases pressure on the banks, it gives them competition and the bond markets also develop. Uh, finally, SEBI uh, fired the firm salvo that banks get up until April uh, 1st, 2019, and thereafter 25% of their borrowings should be through the bond market. The filters are, it should be a large borrowing, that is over 100 crore in terms of loans, and they must be AA rated and above companies. So the uh, better run companies are, have to show the way, and eventually, of course, uh, it will be brought down to other companies as well. Uh, SEBI clearly is meaning this to be experimental because for the first two years, companies will not be punished if they disobey. The rule will be comply or explain. So if you don't comply, you have to give SEBI a reason why you did not comply. Now, uh, what experts tell us in the bond market is that, uh, you know, we should not look at bond markets as a panacea for all ills. Yes, if you go to the banks, the banks get into NPA problems and there is an opaqueness, you don't know how well the co corporate has been rated. It is not as if the bond market solves all those problems. A lot of corporate bond paper 
cannot be valued at all because they are not traded. Out of some 18,000 paper uh, that is out there, only 3,000 or 4,000 are traded, which is 20%. And even where they are traded, it is traded once in a way. So you don't have a price to value it. The, uh, that's why things like ILNFS happen uh, in the bond markets. And therefore, you know, the market uh, experts would say that it is good that SEBI is feeling the way. We must use these two years to put in good rules and to actually increase the intensity of trading so that when you want to value, you have the market at least gives you a price. So there's a lot of work to do. This is just the first step. All right, and that's not all. SEBI has also made it cheaper to invest in mutual funds. Now, towards that end, the market regulator has capped the total expense ratio of active funds at 2%. Though the reform is aimed at attracting more investors to the mutual fund markets, some companies believe that it could have an adverse impact on their business. The point that you cannot pay upfront commissions means that mm. even if there was any scope to influence someone by way of commissions, then I think that is uh, out of the window. Mm. And I think the, in the investor interests, the AMC's interests mm. and the advisor or distributor's interests, everything gets aligned because, you know, if you are in the fund and the fund is performing, mm. uh, then everybody uh, gets their due fees. My sense is that the gross inflow would decline and at the same time, the rotation or churn of funds, you know, someone moving in and moving out, that also would decline. Mm. So I think on the inflows, outflows across the board, I think you will see slightly lower volumes than what you have been seeing in the past. Okay, so important to track that story because remember AMCs will be in focus. Brokerages like CLSA write that lowering of the total expense ratio could lead to 15 to 25 basis point reduction in equity fees. So those stocks will definitely be in focus today. But Amazon backed Samara Capital is likely to announce the acquisition of other Tiberla's more retail chain today. Details on that exclusive when we return. Well, Game Birla's retail company Aditya Birla is likely to announce a deal with Amazon backed by Samara Capital soon. Nisha Poda joins us with all those details. Nisha. It's a large transaction in the waiting, waiting for a while, and now it's likely to be announced very soon is what we gather. On September uh, 19th is when Amazon, as well as Samara Capital, are likely to buy out Aditya Birla uh, Retail Limited's uh, more stores, and uh, the deal size could be around 4,200-odd crore rupees. Now, remember, as per the FDI rules, Amazon cannot have a control here and uh, cannot buy 100% for sure, and Samara Capital is the one which is going to be in the controlling majority as far as the stake is concerned. What we also gather from sources with direct knowledge is that uh, probably the head of um, more right now Prana Barua is likely to also join the new buyers to take care of the operations of more and uh, that is likely to also be announced so it's a large transaction in the retail space with foreign investors really coming in that is the trend right now and for uh, Aditya Birla group it solves two purposes it's a loss making entity so the stop loss comes in and also debt of on the books of this particular company will be wiped off which is around 4000 odd crores Okay, thank you, Nisha, for that. We will watch out for that particular deal. But at this time now for a quick break on the show. Up next, we'll get you a check on the cues to watch from the futures and options space. Stay tuned. Well, yesterday we saw that sudden surge in crude prices given the comments from Saudi Arabia. Today it has retraced back from that $79 per barrel mark, but still closing tra uh, closing uh, trading closer to that $79 per barrel mark. Manisha Gupta joins us now to tell us how the queues look like at the commodity space. Manisha, good morning. Over to you. Well, thank you so much for that. Yes, uh, the uh, OPEC statements have led to a lot of premium into the prices, and that just might about continue because it is this Sunday that the OPEC and the allies are meeting, and they will discuss the fundamentals and dynamics of the uh, global demand supply going ahead and what really would they... This also is going to be a precursor to the December meeting where the final uh, uh, you know, decision would be taken on how the OPEC and allies want to take it forward in 2019. Apart from that, the Iran sanctions on 4th of November is something that would continue to support the prices. The only reason that you have seen a decline come in is because of a surprise buildup in the U.S. inventories. Markets were anticipating a decline, but you've seen a buildup, and that's the reason some bit of a profit-taking has come in. But overall fundamentals still do look good for the crude oil prices. All right, Manisha, let's focus on the sugar space then. We understand that the Cabinet and the CCEA will meet today. They're likely to approve subsidy on sugar exports. Uh, Give us some details on that front, Manisha. 
Oh, well, absolutely. You know, this is an industry that the uh, government has been keeping a focus on. Uh, it started with the ethanol price rise, uh, uh, if you make it purely from sugar cane juice. And since then, you have seen the sugar prices and the sugar stocks as well continue to rally. Uh, government is going to take uh, <coughs> on agenda the export subsidy today. Nearly 5 million tons of exports have been made mandatory by the government, but we've seen just about a fraction of that actually being exported because it's not viable or feasible for the sugar industry to do so because the global international prices also have been on the weaker side. So what we are looking at today is a sugar export subsidy going through in two parts. One, of course, is going to be on the mill purchase itself, uh, and the other one is going to be on the transport uh, uh, transport of this mill. So uh, on both sides, of course, on one side, we're looking at 14 rupees per quintal, and on the other side, 2 to 3 rupees per quintal when it comes to transport uh, export subsidy. Uh, if that does go through, markets do expect uh, uh, this to help in a big way. If you look at the Brazil sugar output, that also is expected to be weak by 4 million tons. So the international sugar prices are trading steady. If the export subsidy does go across today, you will look at then exports picking up uh, in the Indian markets as well. All right. Thanks so much for that, uh, Manisha. Well, let's tell you about how straight set up uh, today and what's going on in the derivatives market. First up, let's take a look at the cash market numbers. The FIs, they were bet se big sellers to the tune of around 1,000 crores. Uh, that's what we have been seeing in the last few trading sessions as well, barring one, uh, one uh, trading session. And the problem now is that when the FIs sell more than 1,000 crores, the DIs, they're only you know, absorbing close to around 25% or around 50% of that. Even in yesterday's trading session, 250 crores or thereabouts is what they bought. So there's a bit of a mismatch in the net selling of the FIs in comparison to the net buying of the DIIs. The important part, though, is going to be that the bulls, they're going to lo look to defend the 11,200 to around 11,250 odd mark. I'll tell you why. A couple of observations. Yes, the Nifty ended at the low point of the day, but the India VIX as well should come up for you. That didn't move up. Remember, normally when you see the markets end lower, the VIX ends much higher. So that didn't really uh, happen in yesterday's trading session. The second factor is that the PCR has connected from around 1.6 all the way to sub 1.2. Now it's moving towards the lower end of the range. When we uh, see the PCR move towards 1.7, you expect a bit of a correction. When it moves to around 1.1, 1.15, as we have seen in the past, we see a bit of a bounce from there. And in yesterday's trading session, though the Nifty ended the low point of the day, the premium on the Nifty futures, that didn't really contract. It still held on to that 30-odd uh, mark. So that told you that, in fact, maybe there were some contra-long positions that were, uh, uh, that were uh, built up. In terms of the open interest, the Nifty OI was down in yesterday's trading session. The Nifty uh, Bank, in fact, we did see massive open interest build up in yesterday's trade, more than 20%. Remember, today the expiry, weekly expiry, will play out as well. And as I told you, it appeared there were some contra long positions that did, uh, you know, that, that we did see. So the FIs, they bought close to around 1,000 crores. They added nearly five long positions for every one short position. And in fact, if you take a look at it, the absolute number, the FIs bought 10,000 long contracts. So that's telling you that there could be a bit of a bounce if we defend that 11,200 odd mark. Yes, the FIs are net short on the index, but I told you that they're expecting a bit of a bounce. If things go wrong, they're bought protection on the downside. Even in yesterday's trading session, they bought 23,000 put contracts. There is some shorting, though, on individual stocks. So keep an eye out on that fr front because uh, they sold more than 1,000 crores in stock futures. Stocks that we're looking at, well, you could keep an eye out on Balram Puccini. It's back in the FNO ban. And in terms of call writing, the bears, they'll feel that they can defend the 11,400, 11,500 odd mark because huge amount of open interest built up even in yesterday's trade. But 11,200, for me, that's a very, very important mark, uh, you know, because that has the highest open interest and it was active yesterday as well. Okay, so both looking to defend the recent lows and that looks likely as well because SGX Nifty for starters is suggesting a start at 11,340 mark, 50 points higher than yesterday. But that's all the time we had on Power Breakfast today from the team and myself. Thank you so much for watching.